Hey everybody, I just got done shooting this video you're about to watch. Um, I decided not to edit the video at all. It's an unboxing of the Slow and Sear kettle and I just felt like it would give you guys a more authentic view of uh, what I thought as I unboxed it if I didn't edit it. So feel free down below in the comments to point out everything I messed up, everything, every time I got words mixed up, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kettle Cookers. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you'll get updates every time I put out a new video. Uh, it's been a while since my last video, but hopefully I'll get back into the swing of things and have more videos coming out on a pretty frequent basis. Uh, today I got in the mail a Slow and Sear Kettle Grill uh, along with the Slow and Sear Deluxe from Slow and Sear Grills. So uh, David Parrish, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, I've always been a big fan of Slow and Sear products. I've got a Slow and Sear Original. I have already have a Slow and Sear Deluxe, so this is my second one. I have a Slow and Sear XL for the 26 inch kettle. And I have the Ranch Kettle Edition, which they don't make anymore, but I, I use that all the time in my Ranch Kettle, especially for smoking. Um, today, I just wanted to unbox the Slow and Sear Kettle Grill. Um, I, I know that shipping is a big issue on a lot of these grills, um, so I want to unbox it and just kind of talk about how it was packaged. Um, I may or may not do a video of actually putting it together. Um, I personally find those videos to be a little bit long and not very interesting but I'll probably go ahead and film it. And if there's anything interesting I come across uh, while I'm putting it together, I'll share that with you guys. Um, if you don't know what the slow and sear is, it's basically just an accessory that goes in any kettle grill. So you can use it in a Weber kettle. Uh, it also is gonna work in the slow and, slow and sear kettle grill. Um, it's basically a divider system that goes into your grill. So what you can do, you put this into your grill it's going to protect the side of your grill from heat so you don't have coals directly against it. It uh, has holes in the bottom so that it can breathe and hold your coals. Um, and then what you do is if you are smoking, you can put this water trough in it. And when this is full of water, this water is only going to get to 212 degrees. So it creates a natural barrier between your coals and then your indirect section of the grill. Um, so you're not going to have super high heat. If you held your hand right here while this was loaded with coal, this could be five, 600 degrees. Your hand right here is going to be about 212 degrees because this water barrier prevents the heat from getting hotter. So it, it creates two zones in your kettle. So you can cook directly over the coals here and do all your searing. And then you can put other meats, big meats like brisket, ribs, pork butt over on this side for indirect cooking. So it's a very effective tool. You know, a lot of people just swear by Weber baskets or fire bricks. Those all work as well, but this just makes it really easy. These do not come out of my kettles hardly at all because it just makes the setup so easy. When you, when you go to do a cook, you just pour your coals in, put a lighter cube at one end and you're good to go. So that is the Slow and Sear Deluxe. Uh, I will note, this is extremely shiny and new right now. It is not going to stay that shiny. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. It's made of stainless steel, so it will hold up. Um, some people like to keep their stuff shiny and clean. You can try, but you really don't need to. I, like I said, I just leave it in my grill. I, I hardly ever do anything with it. All right, so let's get into this box and see how this is packaged. All right, first thing on the top here is a side shelf. Um, so it does come with a shelf. This is a right hand grill, so the shelf will go on the right hand side of the kettle. Just gives you a place to put down your tray of meat, or if you want to lay your tongs on it, you can do that. Seems like it's pretty high quality. It's curved to fit the side of the kettle, and it has some reinforced, uh, I guess, grommets, you call it. With, with, uh, they are threaded, so that's going to be how it attaches. 
Um, one thing I'm noticing already is this is all packed with a lot of styrofoam and it's kind of soft styrofoam. So it's going to give a little bit if it gets beaten up by UPS or FedEx. Uh, assembly manual. Okay, this appears to be the charcoal grate. You can see it is boxed up really well in cardboard. So it's not going to ding or dent anything as it's being shipped. It is porcelain coated. So you shouldn't have rust issues with it like some other great skit. Okay, we've got a box of parts in here. And then the actual bowl. Boy, it looks like it's got a very clean, smooth finish on it. We've got the ash cleaner system. This has five blades. Uh, it also has five holes, five slots down in the bottom. Um, so we'll see how that affects it. Uh, most of the Weber kettles have three slots. Uh, to me, it looks like it maybe the, the slots aren't quite as long as a Weber kettle, but there's more of them. So I think we're going to get a lot more airflow. Uh, I'm in Tennessee now, so airflow is not as big of a deal to me as it was um, previously when I lived in Denver, I noticed that my Weber kettles had a harder time getting to high temperature just because of the altitude. And this grill probably would have would have taken care of that issue with the increased airflow. Uh, some other things on this grill, there is a port down here. Um, you can hook your air controller directly to it, I believe is what it's for. Um, and I think it does have a cover that slides over it. You could also use it for running probes into the grill if you wanted. Got some screw holes here for um, the side shelf. And then all of these holes over here are going to be for the lid bale. Uh, yep, and there's some more over here. So my initial reaction to this is it does look like it's really well coated. Um, I don't see any bare metal in the leg sockets. The leg sockets are black. They're not the same gray color, but they are coated all over. Even the holes are coated. So I don't see any exposed metal. It looks like a pretty solid grill. I mean, it's similar in weight to a Weber kettle. Oh, it looks good. All right, more styrofoam. And then we've got the lid lid same thing as the bottom all of the metal is painted there's no bare metal shiny metal showing on this which is really good that should help prevent rust uh, when i lived in denver rain wasn't as big of an issue but here in tennessee it seems like since i moved a month ago it's rained almost every day so that's a big deal uh, the exhaust vent is teardrop shape that's going to let you be able to fine tune a little bit better as you open and close your vents we've got holes here for the lid handle and then we have holes here for a thermometer that seats really nice tiny bit of play, which is fine. If it didn't have a tiny bit of play, it would be hard to get on and off. It, it does seem like it's seated pretty evenly all around, so it's definitely round. Uh, sometimes when you get kettles in the mail, they've been banged up in shipping and are a little bit out of round. You gotta kind of give them a squeeze to get them back in shape.
All right, next up, I am seeing legs. Uh, one difference with this grill versus other kettles uh, is this has four legs, so it gives you a sturdier base. Um, I've heard a lot of people saying the four legs looks a little bit strange, and I, I'd agree a little bit, but as long as it's functional, I really don't care. All right. All right, the legs are very shiny. Uh, they do have clips so that they will stick in the leg sockets and then holes in the bottom for the bottom shelf. Next up, we have the cooking grate. Okay, and this is a slow and sear easy spin grate. It's made with the handle welded to the top of the grate so that there's nothing hanging down on the bottom side of the grate that's going to hit the supports for the grate when you try to spin it around. So when you put it in the grill, you can spin it very easily. And what this allows you to do, you can't, maybe a little bit hard to tell, but the grate is hinged right here. This side opens so that you can get easy access to the slow ends here. Um, and David Parrish has come up with the cold grate reverse sear technique. And what that is, is you're gonna put your meat over here. If your slow and sear is here, this side of the grate will be much cooler than this side is. You put your, if you're searing a steak, you'll put your steak here and then spin it so that it is over the slow and sear over direct heat. This side will cool while your steak is searing on one side, you flip your steak over and then you spin it again so that now your steak is on the cold grate and directly over the, the coals. And what this does is it gives you a all over sear on your meat instead of sear marks from the grill grate itself. Um, I already have one of these for my 22 inch kettle and one for my 26 inch kettle. Uh, the, the spin function is awesome on it, but the thing I like most about it is it is stainless steel and, and just the, the size of each rung on the grate just seems to be perfect for being able to clean it. This grate scrapes clean um, with a brush very easily. It's, it's one of the lowest maintenance grill grates that I have as far as cleaning is concerned. I'm excited to have a second one of those because they are awesome grates. Okay, here is the shelf for the bottom. Uh, this gives you a lot more room than a Weber kettle would uh, to hold things. Uh, should be able to hold your charcoal chimney down there without problem, uh, and then anything else you may need. And we've got the lid bale. Uh, that'll go over on the side of the grill so that when you open the lid, you can just slide it in here and it'll hold it up for you. Uh, I just realized the ash catcher is probably what's in this box over here, which is pretty important. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. find my knife so I'm just going to use a screwdriver. Okay, so inside of the cardboard box I thought was just assorted hardware and the wheels. I'm realizing the ash catcher is in there, so I definitely want to take a look at that. Uh, here we go, random hardware, more hardware. All right, we've got one of the handles. Handles look nice. It looks like a nylon that should be uh, heat resistant. It's a nice size. It's a bigger 
a round handle than the Weber Grills has. Has the SNS Grills logo on it. We've got two wheels. So the four legs, two of them are on wheels, two of them are not, which means it's not going to roll around on you when it's uh, being used, but you can move it around pretty easily. Another handle. I don't know if I will be installing both handles since I have the table that goes on the side. Um, I don't know if I can install both or if uh, only one handle needs to go on for the table. Uh, this is parts for the this is the ash sweep. It's got two tabs on it to lock it in place. And then this is the rollers for the lid bale so that you are sliding your lid against nylon rollers rather than uh, against bare metal. Okay, this is the ash pan. Uh, I can tell from looking at this, it's got three tabs that it clicks into. I also see where a handle is going to screw in on the side here. So I imagine it's going to go in and twist and lock in. Um, that looks pretty sturdy. If it didn't have holes in the side of it, I'd say that you could cook in this. Uh, another handle. There's going to be one for the lid as well. Uh, this is a side handle. It does have hooks so you can hang your tools from it. That's very nice. That's something you can get as an add-on for some Webers. Some of the, the higher-end Weber kettles do come with that. We've got a thermometer for the lid. Looks like it goes from zero up to 100 and, or, I'm sorry, not 170. Looks like it goes from zero to 700 degrees, which is great. Um, I know it's not a SNS product, but I'm a big fan of doing wings with the Vortex. And the Vortex can get to extremely hot heat. The fact that this thermometer goes up to 75 or I'm sorry 700 degrees tells me that the kettle can withstand that temperature so that is awesome all right this is the ring for holding the ash catcher system I can tell it's going to clip into all four legs um, and then it does have markings here, X, O, X. So it looks like this grill, it's kind of nice because it depends on which direction you're using it from. It's going to be closed as you slide the ash system this way. It'll go to open and then you can close it on this side as well. Um, and that looks pretty solid. And yeah, here's the clips that the basket will go into just like that okay we've got additional parts for the lid bale and then the top lid vent uh, one thing I notice about this is it sits up a little bit higher than a lot of other kettles do. Um, so hopefully this doesn't get as hot. Even even the Weber kettles, you know, the same thing with this. It's a nylon handle. It's heat resistant, so it's not going to melt on you. But they still get really hot when you have a hot grill going. Um, and this has the similar teardrop shape in it, I guess you'd call it. Um, and it's going to allow you to fine tune um, how open and shut your vents are. Yeah, that really does a good job of giving you some fine tuning, being able to have it just barely cracked if you want or wide open. All right, so that is the unboxing of this. Uh, I have a few other things David sent me. He sent me a instant read thermometer. It looks like this one's really fast. Um, it is backlit two to three second response time. Uh, it's waterproof, which is a big deal. I leave my... Um, thermometer stuck on my grills all the time when I'm done using them and forget about them and I've, I've I think I've ruined one or two definitely one uh, so it being waterproof is really nice um, it auto rotates so if you put it in upside down the screen is going to flip for you so you can read your temperatures 
Uh, I also got a really nice set. Basically, they're welding gloves, so they're high heat gloves, heat resistant, uh, and they're leather, so they'll stand up really good. One thing I like about these is they do have long cuffs, so if you're reaching over the fire, or over the heat to get to something, it gives you some protection. They're really comfortable, too. also got a cover with the grill which is very nice I feel like when grills aren't included with the cover you don't bother buying it and then your grill gets rained on all the time so I'm excited to have a cover for this um, and then I'm really excited about this I have not tried slow and sears rubs yet this is Rocky's rub which is a pork rub and then not just for beef which is a beef rub the interesting thing about these is it looks like they have no salt at all in them. So if you're looking for a low salt rub, um, this is actually a no salt rub. Um, I've seen a lot of people using it. I know Babyback Maniac is a big fan of the Rockies rub. Uh, I've seen a few other people using both of these rubs and I can tell from just the look on them. Uh, I don't know if, how well you can see the color, but they've got really good color. So they're going to give your meat nice color, uh, especially for smoking. And then you can just add salt um, as you need. So I would probably, like for ribs, I'd probably put down a base layer of some kosher salt and then put this over the top and it'll give uh, all the additional flavor and color. Uh, the ingredients on this one are brown sugar, sugar, paprika, garlic powder, spices, uh, or garlic powder, spices, onion powder, lime powder, um, and then a few other things. So th these are really common uh, ingredients. Uh, the beef rub is spices, sugar, onion powder, garlic powder, mustard. Um, so I'm definitely going to give these a try out and I'll let you guys know what I think. Uh, so that's it for the unboxing. David Parrish, I want to thank you again for sending me this stuff. Uh, I just moved, so this is kind of a, a housewarming gift. And uh, I intended on getting the YouTube channel going again, so this is going to definitely motivate me to do a whole bunch of cooks. Put this thing through its paces, see what it can do. Um, so everybody stay tuned. I'm sure I'll have some videos coming with Slow and Sear Kettle Cooks. Uh, I also recently got a Gateway Drum Smoker. I'll be cooking on that, and I've got all my kettles here with me. So there will be 22-inch Weber Kettle videos, 26-inch Weber Kettle videos, Ranch Kettle videos coming. But Probably first up is going to be the Slow and Sear Kettle Grill. I'm really excited about this. Uh, again, if you haven't subscribed already, click the subscribe button down here. Also click the notification bell. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and leave your comments down below. Thanks, everybody. I'm stuck. I can't get out. What do I do?